are entitled to attack the credibility of any witness whose testimony tends to incriminate the accused. In addition to that, we have told you in our papers, and perhaps for the first time, that Detective Furman then went on within hours to suppress vital evidence tending to exculpate the defendant because he interviewed and asked questions of one Rosa Lopez, who lives next door, who saw the defendant's Bronco at its parking spot on Rockingham between 10.15 and 10.20 that night. He reported it to no one. There are no reports about it, and she had never been interviewed by the prosecution as of last night. So, if he suppressed evidence and claimed to find incriminating evidence, I think we hardly need to go further before we have the right to ask him, and by the way, haven't you said on past occasions that you are in favor of genocide? Because what he really said was, let's put them all in a pile and burn them all. And I haven't heard that come from anyone since Adolf Hitler. That's a pretty extreme statement. Not only that, Mr. Furman, as of this morning, invoked the jurisdiction of Good Morning America to make public and truculent statement about the trial plans and ammunition of my colleagues from the prosecution as to how they will decimate the witness who claims she heard him say these things after she tried to fix him up with a woman who had gone out with a black man. This was an outburst. So I cannot imagine a clearer case of the defense having an absolute and an alien, indelible, irrevocable right to smash into any person so low life as to make those utterances and then proceed to the witness stand and attempt to incriminate for murder through these defalcations and spoliation a member of the African-American race. There could be no clearer case, but the Anthony case, Your Honor, it seems to me, makes it very clear to the court that any elimination or limitation, because in Anthony, one racial bias question was allowed, the second one was excluded, and that was held to be a violation, not of California, but of the United States Constitution, relying on Davis v. Alaska, a 1974 case in which Chief Justice Berger joined by six other justices, condemn any limitation on racial bias questions on cross-examination. I don't see any wiggle in them, and while I was happy to put together the proffer that you asked for in your uh, ruling, your own, simply because you asked for it, I don't think it was necessary. I think once Vermin hits the stand without any warning to anybody as to what we're up to, we're able to ask him, don't you hate black people? And haven't you said so on many occasions and particularly this occasion, after you learned that this defendant had a romantic entanglement with a Caucasian woman. I believe that crosses the bridge, and I believe it crosses it in such a way that it can never be torn down. I think beyond the Anthony case, there's no, nowhere else to look. Uh, certainly this is an area carved out where judicial discretion has been pinched down to the point where it may not exist, except in cases of, of rank abuse, when there was no possible relevance to the person's bias as it related to his testimony. But the bias of this witness against this defendant in particular, and his race in general, could well explain a number of false statements on his part, which we're going to tell the jury he's made. We're not trying to prove that he planted anything, because we don't have to. We're simply saying, if the only evidence you have that this love came from O.J. Simpson's home is Detective Mark Fern, that isn't enough evidence to convict a rat, let alone a human being. And I think that's a fair argument under the circumstances of this case. After all, there's another principle at play here, if it pleases the court. This is the people's witness. The people are stopped to complain that having been put on notice in 1981 that this fellow had terrible racist feelings, terrible feelings he couldn't control his violence against people he was arrested. They found that he not only was good enough to stay on as an LAPD detective, but promoted him in the process. And certainly if Mrs. Bell was hearing his racist feelings in 1985 and 1986, someone in the department was hearing it, and they were terribly insensitive to leave him with a badge and a gun, knowing how he felt in this city in the turmoil of summer. Questions as to the process? Not at this point, Captain. Thank you. Ms. Lewis? 